Hello. New things. Hi. Welcome to the Umcast. This is Vicky. And this is Michelle. And we're happy you're here. Very happy. And I have to say something that Burner said last night about Scotty Larson. Larsa. What's her name? Pippin. Pippin. Larsa yeah. Pippin. Yeah. Okay. He goes, you know why this is extra weird? I was just listening to your guys' last episode about Larsa yeah. and the five times a night sex thing. Totally normal and like everybody does. And he goes, I forgot to tell you. I'm like, did I tell you why this is weird? It's really like at 930 at night last night. He comes out. Did I tell you why this was weird? I already know what you're going to say. Only because someone, someone, a listener, a friend texted, messaged said us and said the same thing. Okay. But this is what's disturbing about it. He oh, goes, God. so Larsa was married to Scotty. Okay. Scotty and Michael Jordan are friends and yeah. played together. Michael Jordan's son is Marcus, who Larsa is now having sex with five times a night. He goes, that would be like Hank and Shay. And I was like, why are we? Ew. No, it's not like that. That's weird. And then a few minutes later, he goes, okay, the age difference was only 16 years. So it's, I guess it's not the same, but it is still very weird. You're all that. that I don't want that image yeah, at all. I don't. Thank you, Why sir? did that have to be the connection? Why did we have to talk oh. about that? But that is weird. Like, okay, your ex-husband's co-worker, their son, now you're with. Yeah. Um, yep. Aaron, also thank you for sending us this exact same message with the same uh, information, which when I read it, I was like, Hmm, I think I knew this. I think I knew this. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, except that like, maybe when you spend a lot of time together mm -hmm. and you get to know everybody and it just, you're like, well, I already know everyone here and he's younger and hotter. <laughs> and I just feel like I need to upgrade. I need to, it's kind of like what old men do when they right. keep marrying younger women, mm -hmm. even though they keep getting older, their wives don't get any older. Yeah, what's that Alan guy? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that guy. Oh, you know, pervert, Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Yeah, well, well I mean, at least Larsa is not marrying her oh, stepson. child. Her own child. Yeah. So that's, that's, or her okay. adopted, Step up. adopted child. Step up there. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. People are weird, man. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I, I doesn't know. Mm -mm. No. 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 Anyway, how are you? How am I? I think I'm PMSing. I think I'm grouchy. Me too. Oh, it's not surprising. And bloated. Though. I feel very bloated. I feel squishy. I feel... I'm just team pajamas right now, so I actually don't even know if I'm bloated because I'm not putting on clothes like that, was, that would let me know that I am. I just don't care. Well, the only reason why I'm in jeans right now is because I have no clean leggings or sweats. Oh, bummer. Because guess we just haven't been doing laundry for the last week. <laughs> so you know, laundry you. is this thing where, like, I know I'm my best self when I'm doing one load a day. Like, I should do a load a day. But then I start to think... This seems, this seems a little ridiculous. Like, I, I feel like I'm being a little overkill here, right? Because mm -hmm. then what happens is I'm like, well, all the laundry's clean. I should wash the blankets Ooh. and I should wash the pillowcases, like the, the couch yeah. pillowcases. And like, I start getting real thorough. And, but then I start to doubt that that's necessary. I feel like I'm overdoing it. And so then I'm like, you know, I'm going to take a break. I'm just going to say like, I'll give it two days, maybe three days. And then and it what ends up, up happening, yeah, a week uh, before I realize it's been a week and now my kids are like, mom, I don't have any sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, maybe I should buy some more sweatshirts. Right. Because I feel like really you should have enough maybe sweatshirts. Buy more. I know. But I you feel should that have too. enough that I don't have to wash them every three days. Uh, Is that, I don't know. Unfair? Or how many sweatshirts should they have? At know. what age do you teach your kids to just do their own laundry? Um, I mean, you know, I talk about it. I have yet to do that only because I have the time yeah. to do it. And it's so, I feel like of all the chores, laundry is almost the easiest one. And the one I'm like, well, don't take that away. Right. You, I mean, I wouldn't mind if they put it in. I, I don't know. I guess that's not true. I wouldn't mind if they did it, I guess. Yeah. The only chore we have our kids do is trash day. We have our Which kids. Which has been a very welcomed thing. Yeah, our kids collect the trash from all the trash cans in the house. 
Do you also give them a dollar each after? I give them no yeah. money. I like, no. Why am I paying them to do this? I give them no money. They're... I give them a roof over their heads. Yeah. 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 Yep. They also feed the cats and they make their beds and, you know, a few other things. But... Okay. I want to talk about Um Castanana's because I think that there's been very positive um, uh, reactions to it. People have opinions on questions. They do. Um, I, I, what I, I had a, I, I enjoy it. I like it. I'm liking it. It's just started. But I also had this like thought. Okay, so last week we talked about engagement rings and whether or not you should tell the your partner if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. You get this ring. You didn't help pick it out. They went on their own, and then you're like, D I hate it. Mm -hmm. It's not really my style. And we, and I think the way that we did it is like, I didn't really ask you, like, what would you do? Because, I yes, mean, I did. just, really? Yeah, we were both like, fucking say something. Okay, well then someone was like, you know, I've never, someone wrote in and was like, I don't, I've never really liked mine. But I like that he picked it out and that he made that effort. And so that makes it special and to me. And that makes me like it more because he picked it. Yeah. Which, like, I guess on my most generous day, I'm like, yeah, I could see that. But then I was thinking also about, like, what I think what it came down to after, like, my very strong opinion, which it's still strong. Like, I even have a story to go with it to, like, support my, my take from it. But, like... I guess I just, I had like second thoughts about it almost, be not about my opinion, but about like the segment itself, mm -hmm. because I was like, I just want to be very, very clear that it's not what I think should be done. It's not what I think. No, but they're asking us what our opinion is. No, I know. But I just, I just wanted to say like, it's not the point is like, this is obviously what you should do. No, the point is, this is obviously what I would do mm -hmm. and what I have done. Yeah. But and look, the podcast is called yeah. Uncensored. No Mom. one's upset about it. This was just no, no, my no. this is just my like emotional reaction yeah. to the differences. That's all I'm saying. Most of our answers though, in case you guys don't won't wouldn't guess, is gonna be on the side of speaking your truth. No that's, that's kind of just like our MO. Yeah. So, but of course, any everyone's Welcome to disagree in any way. No, no, of course, of course. I just I just had this, like, thought of, like, yeah, I just want to clarify. The point is, like, that's what I would do. I don't think anyone was questioning that. Okay. Okay. Not I don't right, think eh? anyone was like, God damn it, Vicky, always pushing her agenda on us. Yeah, well, I think that as I probably I will say that therapy, that's one of my hang-ups. Well, yeah, is, yeah. is questioning your... No, it's like, it's thinking I'm too strong yeah. and too forceful. Right. Too, like I need to, I need to reel it in, bring it back and be less. Do we need to have Mitzi be come in? Maybe. And reassure you right now. No, I need, I want to do talk. I want to find a, a good, consistent talk therapist. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. We were talking about EMDR. Wait, hold on. Finishing my thought. Cause I know I do this. <laughs> we do this. No, never. I was just going to say. I will say that that woman's message was the minority of responses. I do agree. I do agree she was in the minority, but I just feel like it's, you know, she... Uh, it's a different it's not perspective. It's not irrelevant. Yeah, I feel like it's still relevant. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were talking about how it's been, you know, a month or so, two months since EMDR wrapped up. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Are we having problems again? Well, it's kind of just like, okay, EMDR is so great for specific targets right. to reprocess. I was telling Vicky that I've gone back in my brain to test to test myself. Like, did I really reprocess these things? Like, I thought about Bo, and I was trying to put myself back in like, okay, this is the time period. I was looking at photos, actually. I'm like, this is the time period when I was pregnant with him. And I'm like checking my feelings, and I'm like... Okay. Huh. Well, I still feel like it's been reprocessed. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I recognize that that was a sad time, but it wasn't consumed with sadness. It was mixed in with all the other things that I had processed of or reprocessed of, you know, gratitude and 
It, so yeah, I think it really, really works for specific targets. It does. Specific targets. Specific, actually happened targets. Yeah. I think the talk therapy is probably great for just ongoing life and being a mom. For me specifically, it would be to talk about being a mom and like losing my shit and like working, having it at the forefront of your mind every week, every two weeks, talking to someone to like, it's just to like, it's like a reassurance. Mm -hmm. It's like a touchstone of like, so this happened. This is how I felt. That's okay, right? Like, yeah, validation. Am I, yeah, a validation. Exactly. Like, am I... We've lost that. We don't have that anymore. I, I don't have someone to just tell me, you're great. You're yeah. doing okay. I can tell you every week you're great and you're doing okay. And I can tell you as well, but like... It helps, it's, but it it's helps. not a professional. Right. Like, it helps to have support from your friends and from your yes. partner and, you know, maybe even from your family if you're lucky. But, like, you know, it does make a difference for mm -hmm. someone to, like, because they're not looking at it as, like, with all the stuff we know about you. They're looking at it as, like, well, hopefully as an objective observer mm -hmm. and someone who has, like, actual knowledge about psychology. Right. Human psychology. Mm -hmm. Which none of us do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm. I think that's probably something I should look into. Okay, well, let me know who you find. I will. <laughs> I will, and we will go to the same person. Same person, same day. <laughs> I think we'll be logged off. It after. does make it easier. It, it really, really does. It just makes it easier. It's like when someone says, "Do you have a dentist that you mm -hmm. like?" and you refer, and then you're like, "Thank you. I really need to go to the same dentist yeah. as you." Can because... you make my appointment for me? Well, that helps too. Can you book me an RV for the campgrounds? Because I can't do it on my own. That's what friends do. That's what friends are for. That's what friends are for. Um, I'm cast anonymous. Yeah, today's a today's a big question that we're picking, and I think that we should start talking about it because we have a lot of things to say. It's gonna take a long time. So the question we got. Um, which also thank you for your submissions and I promise every question that's coming in we're putting in a special shared folder so that we can get to all of them yes except for you Jamie who said who can hold their breath the longest I think maybe we should start with that we could <laughs> let's just let's all sit in silence let's Vicky and set I hold the her. timer <laughs> and go I bet it's me <laughs> no <laughs> like if we were really gonna do it right now no I, I challenge you bitch should we do it? Yeah, I challenge you. Okay, but I want people to sit for two minutes and silence. <laughs> no, I will be. I will be talking. Do you want me to put my? You... Do you want me to put my timer on my phone? I uh, sure. Are we really gonna do this? I honestly, I just feel like you just challenged me, and I'm feeling like I have to respond. I have to see if this is true. It's your competitive, competitive spirit. Nature. You're not mine. Oh, you're not. You're kind of competitive every now and then. Something that's fun to do. Are Ready? you going to go first? No, we're going to go at the same time. Oh, well, then when no one can talk. All right. Oh. That's what I was saying. Gotcha. All right. Here we go. You're going? We're both going. We're both going. Okay. Okay. Ready? But how, what, what do we, is there like a, we, well, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Whatever. You could always cut the dead space and be like, just trust us. It was five minutes long. <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> One, two, three. Honestly, I, I couldn't keep myself from laughing. Michelle's still going. So. <sighs> I will let it go, but I was ready to go much I longer. Just couldn't stop that was about 42 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so. You know what would be a fun one, though, is um, similar in nature. Holding a note. How long can you oh, hold yeah. a single note? I don't think it would be 42 seconds. That's what friends are for. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, I feel like if you're gonna do it, you shouldn't do that. No, no. 
<laughs> Vicky and I want to start acting classes. You know, like something like that instead of like. Uh, uh, uh. I mentioned acting classes to Vicky, and she goes, "Oh, what about an improv class?" And then I got all nervous. <laughs> improv is scary. Yeah, because what if I fuck it? What if I'm like? There's no. That's the thing about improv. There's no fucking it up. It's what like, do you mean? And also, hello. That was me doing improv just now. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you, this is what we improv every single week. You're right. Like, you're very adept at improv, by the way. Thanks. You're welcome. Vicky? No, I think I would get all stupid and... Oh, <laughs> you get all stupid. I don't know. I don't know about that. That's why you do those exercises in the beginning of class. Like, wow. 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 The she so 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 you have to make funny noises and you have to make funny faces. Humans yeah. are weird. No, that's for sure. Okay, back to um, Cast Anonymous. Um, I have a question. Did I <laughs> save that question? Yeah, it's in our shared folder. Oh, look at this professional human mm -hmm. with a job. This is a this is a big one. This is a doozy, and it's um actually relevant. Something just happened to me last night. It's I wouldn't call it specifically that, but. Any advice for elementary age bullying? Also, the question, do parents know their kids are bullies? Which I think is a really great follow-up mm. because I think that when we first read this question out loud, I think you and I had differing opinions on that second question. Oh, good. But, I like when we don't agree. Yeah. You um, look just like Kourtney Kardashian just now and your mannerism and... Oh, good. <laughs> I don't, what is she? I, I can't even conjure her up. Right I see now. her a lot when I'm talking to you. Yeah, well, that's one thing I get. I, <laughs> get, I hear people, people tell me that all the time. All I think is like, oh, then I have a widow's peak? No, really? not at all. No, it's, it's something else. It's the shape it's of your face, else. the hair, how it goes down on the side of your face, the way you speak sometimes, and yeah. then, the yeah, like, I yeah. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you have a story that you were going to share yeah so this came in and i was like well august had a bullying incident this week which um gosh obviously i have the worst memory but i feel like it's our first mm -hmm. um and he said it so casually like i don't think if we had i think if we hadn't sat down to eat dinner together that night because we don't do it every night that it wouldn't have come out because I talked to them a lot and I'd already said like how was school and you know all the questions tell me something that happened and then we're sitting there at dinner and then all of a sudden he's like oh yeah also I kind of got bullied today and we were like what happened and he was like well I was at lunch and there were four kids and one of them took my apple right off of my tray Broke it in half and <gasps> ate it right in my face. I and stole my f food. No, it gets worse. Stealing fire right now. Um. Then apparently they had put like carrots in my milk, but I didn't see them. And then they said, "Augie, why don't you drink your milk?" Aww. And then I drank my milk, and they all started laughing at me. And I asked them to stop, and they wouldn't. And then they poured my <gasps> chocolate milk all over my lap. And I had to have wet pants. Are you fucking day. kidding me? Yeah. And that, my face was like, just jaw dropped, like eyes wide, like what? I was like, August, are you okay? And he was like, well, I was crying and I told them to stop and they wouldn't stop. Do River and August have lunch together? No, they mm -hmm. don't. Mm -mm. And so he said, um, I told the noon duty and, um, she, I don't know, he said he didn't know what she did, but then he's like, it's all right though, my pants dried and, and you know, I got another milk and it was fine. And I was like, have they ever done this before? Like, has this ever happened before? Because you seem really calm about mm -hmm. it. And he was like, no, never happened before. But you know, they're kind of like mean kids anyway. They're not very nice to anyone. And I was like, He's like, I'm him like, do you know them? He's like, yeah, I sit at their table every day. And he's like, and I play soccer with them. And I'm like, and how are they on the soccer field? He's like, mm, they're bullies, but they bully everybody on the soccer team. 
Ew. And so, yeah. And they're in the same grade as him? They're in the same grade. Which is third grade. Fourth. Fourth grade. Only one kid is in his class, but I've heard lots of things about this kid about being difficult on um, the field, like in PE, playing soccer from August, mm -hmm. but nothing like directed at him specifically. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that was pretty much like, I. so, you know, we all like get all four, all three meet Brian and River. We all gave him a big hug, a big group hug, and we were like, you know, try, saying kind things to him. And he wasn't getting teary-eyed at that he point? He really wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I think that the kids probably see and witness a lot of things that maybe aren't nice all the time, and um, I, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I I asked him at first, well, do you want me to tell your teacher? Do you want me to tell the principal? Like, I, I, there should be, it's a no bullying policy in mm -hmm. school, so let me know and I will tell whoever. But I'd, obviously, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable either. I have to sneeze a lot. <coughs> do you hear how cute that sneeze is? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where I'm like, ah, ah. you're manly. You got, you got that strong. Yeah, I think you're a little close. Okay, sorry. Just uh, no, I'm just letting you know. I'm just. Get, I I don't think you have to worry about it. Too okay. Much. Like I think it's free form. Anyway, um. He said maybe you can tell. He's like, but I like don't want, and I'm like them to think you're a tattletale. And he's like, yeah, like I don't want. I don't want them to be like I told on them, and it has to be this big deal. He's like, I don't care. Like I don't even like them. Like I don't. You know, like, uh -huh. I'm also so I'm, mad over here. No, it's so, it's so gross. I like, ugh, stupid kids. But like, I feel like August hangs out with mostly kids River's age. Like he, his closer friends are River's friends. So mm -hmm. they all hang out together. So I feel like he almost feels like there's no one cool in fourth grade. I just go for school and I go to play soccer and basketball. like they don't really mean anything to me anyway like whatever yeah and obviously like I think part of that is good for him I think it's a good thing to feel um kind of like he can rise above these moments mm -hmm. but I also don't want him to miss out on the playfulness and have you know is he doing this because he doesn't feel like he fits in is he like mm -hmm. covering for like pain or, or right I don't know and also but I'm also very clear with him like I, I'm very clear about like you know you don't have to he cried he knows he cried he knows he's allowed to cry mm -hmm. but also like you know you can be vulnerable in like trying to make friends he said um, they have a school counselor and I said oh well what if what I just write to the school counselor she's talking about bullying all the time she'll be able to help you and he mm -hmm. goes Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can write to her because she'll know what to do. So I wrote to her. Immediately she wrote back to me and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to talk to the noon duty. I'll talk to his teacher and we'll figure it out. And so then like a few hours later, this was the next day, she sent me another email and was like, okay, I talked to the noon duty. She said that she did handle it at the time. She talked to all the boys and she knew about what was happening and she felt like it was resolved the point where they understood or something and I also talked to August and I gave him a lot of tools about like things he could say different actions he can take and all of his options and he knows that he can come to me and tell me anything so she's like I think he, he said he's feeling much better and so you know that's all I can do I know it's still so mad I know it's not nice it's not nice and part of me wants to be like okay so you told and if they get mad at you be like well don't fucking be mean to me and I won't have to say anything no, I know. But I like, know, but a kid's not going to do that. A say that. No, I mean, a 37-year-old would. Maybe. Me. Maybe. Me, I would say You that. would. But I'm telling you, I don't know that a lot of people would. Like, even in middle school, when I was bullied, like, I didn't tell a single teacher. And I probably begged my mom not to tell a teacher. And I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Because I think we have this fear of kids of like, yeah, it's going to make it worse if I say something. Yeah. But I disagree. I'd mm. say call them out. Sure. Make it more uncomfortable. You're already uncomfortable. Make it more uncomfortable. And now it's uncomfortable for them. Don't let these people win that we're going to just be quiet and let them keep bullying us because it's like, it's fine. I'll just be the bigger person and slough it off. Like, No, it's so true. No. Yeah. It should be like. They should be real shamed for that kind of behavior. Shamed into, like, not doing it. Which reminds me, 
of, um, it's not my thing I'm loving, but I, I did post about it. There's this show called Heartstoppers on Netflix, uh -huh. and it's, um, it's just fucking adorable. It's really, really good. And it's a British show, and the main character, his name is Charlie, and he's gay, and he's in high school. And it's all about, like, figuring out your sexuality and how, how that plays out and all of the nuances between, like, he's out but it still isn't easy for him. There's mm -hmm. kids who aren't out. Like, it's just all of these layers. Very interesting. But there is one point in the story where there is a guy who was a real big bully to him. And the bully really wanted absolution. He had, like, he, he apologized. He had come to this point where he apologized. And he wanted Charlie to be like, it's okay, right? Just to give him that absolution and to make him feel better. And he was like, no. It's not okay. He's like, I'm not going to be your friend. What you did, even if right now you understand that it was wrong, I never want you to treat someone like that. And if you think that I'm going to forgive you, that means you might be able to get away with it again. Mm -hmm. And it's not okay. And he does it kind of in like an outdoor space. And it's something you kind of hardly ever see, I feel like, on television and in real life. So I think you're totally right. It's true. They always depict the, the, the kids who are getting bullied are like, quiet they rise above it they rise above mm -hmm. they're like you know don't even give those people the energy totally. and it's like fucking no yeah because in real life we have to hold these because they're just gonna awful keep doing people it. accountable yeah they're gonna keep doing it or if they or even if they don't do it they don't nobody knows that they did it and so it's like they really do get away with it like they get to kind of live out this like, in this case, like, this kid is, like, um, closeted, yeah. right? And he gets to live out this, like, heteronormative life, mm -hmm. and no one knows that he's a bully, that he's, you know, trying to see him behind behind closed doors, and that he's making him feel in, insignificant. Mm -hmm. He gets to go on as, as with life, you know? Obviously, yeah. it hurts him. Sure. I don't know. And look, I know not everyone's personality is as fiery as mine. And, you know, when they're kids, like, they're scared. They don't want to say anything. Totally. I get that. So I think that's where, like, the parents need to come in and, A, yes, help them with tools on how to deal with that internally and how to maybe tools for if it happens again. But I also think we need to be advocates for our children and help give them a voice when they don't have one. Yeah. Whether that be reaching out to the teacher, the school. I personally would say I would like to talk to their parents because, I mean. So you're saying, like, if this happened to Rome. I would want to talk to the parents. You would say, like, I need you to find me the parents of those four boys. Yeah. And I want to tell them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that, I personally they probably don't, don't think know. they know. I don't think we know how our kids are like at school. And it's becoming far more apparent as Rome's getting older he meets new kids, he's coming home, he says random things, and I'm like, where did you totally learn that? Oh, so, yeah. like, last night, specifically, he comes out of his room, it's like 9 o'clock, and he's like, I can't sleep, I'm really scared, I think I'm, I'm feeling kind of anxious. And I said, why, what's happened? He's like, well, my friend Isaac told me something today at school about a messenger boy, and if you say something three times, then he'll come and kill you. Oh, fun. And I was like, what? So fun. And, and like a week ago, he said something else. Isaac told me about this this thing called Shadow Man, and I Googled Isaac it. Isaac has older brothers and sisters. No, Isaac is the oldest. No. And he's seven or eight. So his parents have more well, just that's kids? Well, that's the thing. Like, so I think the instinct as parents is to assume, oh, his parents are awful. His parents <sighs> let him play video games all day long or YouTube all day long or... And Watch it's like, scary you want to like, yeah, you want to like blame the parents. Yeah. And so, um, and I think maybe one other thing happened. So I was like, at first I was like, bro, obviously those things are not real. Yeah. So you need to remind yourself that that's not real. Two, if you don't like the things he's talking about, just say, Hey, I don't want to talk about that again. I know that's so hard for like yeah. kids to say, but I'm like, you gotta just say something like, let's talk about something else. Like, eh, that's kind of scary. I give the same advice. Yeah, but then I said, would you like me to text his mom? I happen to have her phone number. Oh, that's nice. Because they had a play date. Yeah, and he was kind of like, yeah, and I was like, okay. So last night, I opened my phone, and I texted um, her, and I was like, hey, so Rome's mentioned 
like two or three times the last few weeks that Isaac said something kind of scary to him and I gave the examples. I was like, honestly, I don't know what those are, <laughs> but it's keeping Rome, like he's having a hard time falling asleep and he's feeling scared. And I was like, I told Rome that, you know, to just mention to Isaac, like, let's talk about something else that's fun. But, you know, I kind of wanted to just reach out to you too. Maybe you can mention something to Isaac as well. Yeah. Totally felt nervous about sure. what she was going to think or respond. I didn't want it to sound attacking. Um, and I even showed Werner. I was like, is this weird? Should I follow up with something else? And yeah. I was like, no, I think that's fine. So she wrote back and she's like, oh man, I'm so sorry. I've never heard Isaac talk about those things ever. She's like, but we'll definitely talk to him. So then a few minutes passed and she's like, okay, we talked to him. We told him, you know, to not talk about those scary things and also to consider other people's feelings. Um, and she's like, thank you for telling me. Yeah. So I said, thank you so much. You know, I know it's so hard to even know what our kids are doing at school. And then I was like, someone actually came to talk to me a few weeks ago about West and something he was doing on the playground that wasn't nice. And I had no idea. And I'm, I was really glad she told me so I could talk to West. And so I kind of just wanted to loop you into thinking maybe you'd want to know as well. Yeah. Um, and then I saw her this morning at Flag Salute. And she's like, hey, thanks again, by the way. I'm like, I'm so sorry again, but thanks for telling me. Um, and, you know, she's like, it's just, she kind of echoed what I said. She's like, it's like, we have no idea what our kids are doing at school. Sure. Yeah. I mean, even though, even if we ask them, like, this is not related to bullying, but I literally said yesterday, did you guys do anything cool, like in your lab classes today? And they're both like, oh, no. Then I go on Instagram and I see that their school posted two videos. My children were in both. And they were, they had just, they made guacamole and ate it, which is like, I feel like that's like a different thing. You've never yeah. done that before. And they started a new like music class and they were like plain steel drums. Right. And I'm like, um, yeah. yeah. I feel like there's such a divide from your world at school. Yeah. And then you come back and like, now I'm in my normal home world. Yes. And then everything else dissipates. It's so true. Yeah, I know. And, and we think as I think that for elementary school, I think that we have this idea that they're still so young mm -hmm. that they couldn't possibly be doing these like social hierarchy, um, inappropriate talk, uh, you know, bullying kinds of things like they don't occur as much or they're not as um, maybe detrimental as like an older one because it's like little kids are always kind of picking yeah. at each other so maybe it's not a big deal but I, I do think it it is happening it is sure. it is and I certainly would always want to know if my kid's being an asshole absolutely and yeah if somebody came and and sent me a text or told me that um you know I would I would j do exactly what that mother did go right to my kid talk to them about it, get the information, follow up, um, you know, because it doesn't make your kid a bad kid, but it is something that, you know, they're not telling you something that they feel like maybe they're not telling you on purpose. Maybe they're not telling you because they don't think it's a big deal. Right. You know, there's all these different reasons, but like, you know, the, I don't know if this is like just depicted in movies or on TV, but like there is this like fear of that, and I do think it exists. The mom or the, even the dad, you know, should he be involved to this degree? <laughs> but like the mom who's like, my not, kid would never, not my kid. Oh, a hundred percent. What'd your kid do? I'm sure your kid provoked him or no like one, wouldn't right. listen. No one wants to believe their kid is capable of being mean. And no even one, though we've all, we we've know all them. We've been mean too as kids. <laughs> yes. You know? And so... I think, yes, it starts with the parents for sure. We have to be open-minded. We have to understand that all kids, I think we should read what our other friend um, wrote about because she has experience with her daughter being bullied as well. But she's basically like, all children are capable of being mean. Yeah. And being assholes to their friends. And like, it's our job now to like, be open-minded if that feedback comes to us continue to have the conversations with their own children about kindness, but not just be kind. Like we need to like 
what, what does that look like? like? What does that look like? Mm-hmm. How can we think about other people's feelings? Yeah. Or even ask, like, is there a time that you remember someone being kind? Is there a show where you can pull to an example? Like, it really has to be situational, mm-hmm. or else it's kind of just, like, words. Yeah, it's like, sure, yeah, let's be kind. Like, it's kindness week this week at the boys' Same. school. Kindness week. Yeah. And, like, yeah, everyone hears the word kind all the time. But well, give examples. Give um, an example. We had asked a friend of ours who was dealing with it, and she um, responded. And one of the things that was, I think, really important, she said that I think sometimes with elementary school, you have to wait it out a tiny bit to see if it's repeated mm-hmm. or if it's a one-off thing. And that's actually exactly what I wrote in that email to the counselor. I was like, he's never told me before, and so I don't want to, you know, I'm assuming this is a one-off. But if it's something that's happening a lot, obviously that's a bigger problem. And then I would like to talk to you in person. Um, But Right, because we throw around the word bullying. And I think bullying is probably where it's repeated behavior. Yeah, yeah. It's a kid who just, yeah, I agree with you. It's not like... Like targeted and repeated. Yeah, targeted is a good word. Um, Not to say you shouldn't have, I mean, you can can actually have conversations if it's a one-time thing. For sure. Um, Especially if it's, like, very egregious. Yeah. Like, I had a mom come talk to me about West on the playground. And she's like, hey, um, Emma was telling me that West wasn't being really nice. Like, him and his friends were, like, pretending to punch, like, in her face. Mm -hmm. And then, like, laughing. And she was saying stop. And they weren't stopping. And I was like, first of all, thank you so much for telling me. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think that's the biggest hurdle is you're afraid how the parent's going to react. Totally. Or even how, like, like if I, so, like, my thought when you say, I would find out who those kids' parents are, like, so I think, okay, so the first step to that is I have to reach back out to this counselor and be like, hey, thank you for doing that. Um, I've been thinking about it, and I would actually, if I could get a, a chance, I would love to know who these... And I, I don't could, think they're allowed to tell you, right? I don't think they're allowed to tell me. And then also what I worry about is that or the first fear that comes to my head is like, oh, she's one of those parents. You know, know, like, oh, here we go. But it's going to need to be involved in everything now. And it's like, even though I've never done, even though I've never done this before. No. That's why I'm like, I think these fears come from movies and TVs we've seen. Maybe. And we've. Because not many of us have gone through this. We're afraid because we're not used to going through these things. They're uncharted territory. And we've been taught to just suck it up. We've been taught to just, eh, just move on. Yeah. Mind your own business. Like, no big deal. But I don't know. It's not like we're being Karens about it. Right. Right. You know, we're not going to the manager of every store. You know, it's like, no, I mean, I'm saying this to you as from parent to parent because I would want someone to say it to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess like, yeah, if you put it the other way and August had gone up to a kid and poured his milk all over his lap, and that little boy went crying. Wouldn't you want to know? And someone told me, I'd be like, he did what? Yeah, you would never be like, tell him to get over it. No, I would never. never. I would be very, very disappointed, and I would want to talk to him for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. And like, okay, worst case scenario, let's say you talk to the other parent, and they're like, my kid would never do that. Or, you know what? They just need to get, your kid needs to get over it. Like, okay, let's say they it say doesn't do. It doesn't matter, right? It's like... At least you know you tried. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do tell the kids, like, if there are things... So, for example, I think I've said this before, but, like, the one of the things that kids do in, in elementary school is they do this moaning thing where they all... This is... These are third, fourth graders, <laughs> even maybe second graders, and they're going, oh... What? Yes. And August has even told me that one of his friends will move his body in a sexual humping way and go oh uh, and they're all doing it okay i've witnessed it i've heard kids standing in line making that sound of course i turn and say you need to stop that right now (laughs) so you sound ridiculous um and so one of his friends was doing it to the point of like never like it was just constant And I told him, well, you have a choice. Like, you do not have to be friends with this person. Like, you don't have Mm -hmm. to spend time with them. And he he genuinely stopped hanging out with them. The other thing this same kid did, and he's a sweet kid. Like, I've spent plenty of time with him, um, is that he would use the word gay as a slur, which kids are still doing, FYI. So make sure you're telling your children not to do that, because I have to keep reminding mine 
that if they hear it, they should speak out against it. But he was also like, oh, you're so gay to August or to whomever, whoever mm-hmm. was there. And so August has really pulled back and he does not hang out with this kid anymore. And that was all on his... Good for him. But I told him, I said, there are always going to be people who do things that you don't agree with and you can still see the good in them yeah. as long as they're not, you know, like horrible people. Like they don't have to be perfect. Right. Sure. So I'm like, so if you ever do want to hang out with him and it feels safe and you feel like you're having a good time, do it. But... You but know, also, it's okay to ask someone to, like, not do something or... Well, yeah, and I know? do, t- I say, I tell them, like, yeah. you know, especially with the gay thing, I'm like, you need to say, that's homophobic. Not, no, no, but beating around the bush. Like, what you just said is homophobic. It's hateful. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. So stop saying it. And those things make me think, like, hmm, are their parents saying that? But For again, sure. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, well, yes, it's possible their parents aren't. It's possible they heard it at school and mm-hmm. they just repeat it. Um, because there's plenty of things like, you know, my kids say bussin. My kid, uh, very, uh, means very cool. Uh, that's good. Bussin. Bussin. Yeah. Like I said, what was, what was lunch yesterday? And River said it was a chicken sandwich and a bean and cheese burrito. And I said, which did you have? He said, well, the chicken sandwich was disgusting. So I had the bean and cheese burrito and it was bussin. <laughs> that's what he said. Right, so there are lots of words that our kids are using that did not come from us. <laughs> right, that is true. That is a good point. I mean, so many. Another Skibbity point with toilet. I don't even skid- know what that. Oh my god. I don't even know Google what that means. It. No, I'm not going to. That's another thing. Rum's like, can we print out skibbity toilet? What is that? It's just a, a man's mean? head coming out of a toilet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, what are you yachting about? Yacht. Your yacht. No. Head? A yacht is like a, a a big booty, a nice big booty. Yeah. Really? Yeah, there was like a Christmas song about yachts that I had to hear a lot. Oh, boy. But it wasn't, I didn't hear the first hand, I just heard them singing it. The point is, is that like, yes, we do not know where they're getting this shit, but it's, it's still, um, it's probably still okay to talk about. I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah. One last thing I would say is. (laughs) You always say that, by the way. And then one last thing. thing. I mean, that's not the last thing. (laughs) Just because I have, I have lots more stuff. Well, I only have, I think I only have this last point, but maybe not. <laughs> I think that when you feel like you've, sometimes people are just going to be shitty, even if you try to talk to their parents. Totally. Maybe the parents are shitty. If you try and fuel your kids with all of the armor to say the things <laughs> to stop it, and then it still just doesn't stop. I think at that point, sometimes we just have to teach our kids that like people who are hurting on the inside tend to hurt other people on on the outside and like literally all i say is like well what do you think is going on with that bully he's sad inside right yeah sad people mad people they are whatever sad Sad people people hurt people hurt people hurt people hurt people hurt people that's right and if i talked to a parent and they were shitty to me i'd probably go tell my kid like so i tried to talk to them they were really mean so it kind of makes sense why the kid's really mean too and sometimes people are just really mean and we just kind of I guess at that point, try to stay away from them. them. Yeah. Just try to avoid them and just know that if it happens again, you know why they're doing it. It's because they're sad inside and you don't need to, it doesn't have anything. I always say it. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Right. We learned that at uh, 37 and 42 years old, (laughs) that's their journey. (laughs) And you can still ask for help. You can still, you know, tell someone if something keeps happening. Sure. But, you know, internally, no, it has nothing to do with you. But I'm sorry. I obviously you asked that question because oh. I'm assuming it's happening in your life. But that's it sucks. It's a shitty situation. No, bullying sucks regardless whether it's your kid doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think of like this is extreme, but like I think of like school shooters. Mm. You know, like the teenage ones where like you know, first of all, don't have a gun in your house. I don't know why you have a gun in your house. Mm-hmm. They can just take it. But like other than that, like I know that there's probably a lot of parents who are like my kid did that. oh my god can you imagine like you're like there was a school shooting you're like oh my god is my kid okay and they're like well no your kid's the one no because the co- yeah know, like your kid's the one who like, did it. i failed as a parent right so like i even on the, that's a very extreme case but like even if someone was like yeah like your your kid is bullying my kid consistently that would be tough that would be really really tough you'd need some emdr for that eventually yeah um, one of the things that our friend said also was that, um, 
uh, she was on the side of educating her kids on how to respond and empowering them on how to advocate for themselves. Um, and then of course, alerting the teacher to what's been going on and or the guidance counselor. Um, but her question, her answer to the question or her opinion on whether parents know, she says she doesn't think that parents know when their kids are bullies, that every kid is capable of mean behavior towards really anyone at school. And when it becomes targeting, then that's really what the difference is. Mm -hmm. And I agree. Like if, if they were doing this every single day to him, like that's that now I'm absolutely mm -hmm. need to know who their parents are. We need to have like a, a sit down, a sit down for sure. But like if it's a one off and he doesn't feel, you know, like it's I told him, like, do you still feel safe at school? Do you still feel like, you know, comfortable? And he the next day he sat at their table again and oh. um, he's like, yeah, nothing happened. I'm like, so are you guys friends? And he's like, um, no, not really. He's like, I sit there because that way I can just eat my food as quickly as I can, and then I can go play. I don't have to talk to anybody. Oh, okay. And it sounds like me. <laughs> I don't have to talk to anybody. It was like me in high school. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're so advanced. Yeah, so. Wow. That was I, a good I, question. Yeah, though. I thank you for that question, and I just don't think that there's a perfect answer for every scenario, but I would just say that it's hard for everybody. Regardless. It is, and I'm, I'm really glad that we are – you know a generation of raising our children to even tell us what's going on yeah you know think about how many kids our age now just never shared anything with their parents ever about school for sure yeah just I mean you know keeping that line of communication open and um you know letting them know that you're willing to go to bat for them um even you know when your kid is the bully like you know, that knowing, seeing them as a human and knowing that there are like multiple sides to them and it doesn't define them. Mm -hmm. maybe, obviously, maybe they're going through something. Maybe school's really hard for them. Maybe they're feeling, you know, out of their life is out of control. Something is happening either way. So, or they're getting the wrong messaging, whatever. Ugh. Yay. Bullying is Yay. the worst. <laughs> um,. I cannot believe how long. I knew that was going to take a little bit. I know. Bit. I'm glad we jumped in. Wow. If you guys have any questions to submit, DM us. It's anonymous. Um, if we don't get to your question right away, pro I promise you we are saving it and we will get to it. Yeah, and I'm actually going to put a new, uh, like a, a form on the website. Oh, good. On umcast.com. Um, so it is the, truly anonymous? Yeah, so it's truly anonymous so that you can enter whatever you want in there. Um, I won't even require like an email address. You just have, you know, whatever. Perfect. And that way, all the perverts know. will come out. Show us your feet. So many perverts. Well, don't worry. We'll give you the link to our OnlyFans soon. Yeah, it's happening. Don't be so yeah. aggressive. Um, I didn't really go into this before when we were talking about the ring thing, but I was on a walk with Brian the other day, and I was like, "What would you do if you had given me, you know, even though I kind of already talked about how like I didn't, I chose the one I wanted eventually." He's like, "Well, you did exactly that," and I was like, "I did." The year after we got married, so it's like a year anniversary, mm -hmm. he bought me uh, an extra, like a... Extra, band. Yeah, band. Thank you. And um, he's like, yeah, I did the same. I went out and I was like, I think this one will look cool with that. And when I gave it to you, you were like, oh, that's nice. But um, I want to exchange it for a different kind. This is what I had in mind. And, and I was like, and how did you feel about that? He's like, I literally didn't care. He's like, I just, I yeah. wanted you to like it. I and you said that like... A minute after he gave it I to you? I think I probably said it, um, I pro what I probably did, again, I'm making it up because I don't really remember, but if I put myself back in my own shoes, I would have put it on and been like, hmm, that's really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, I really like it. It's so sweet. Thank you. It's so sweet. Look how pretty. It's so pretty. And then I would have stared at it for like a full 24 hours and been like, can I, can I do it? Yeah. Do I like it? And then I would have probably been like, so I don't think I like this one. Can we switch it? Mm -hmm. Cause I think I have a different idea. And then he'd be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, you know? I know. I know. Cause I do want to give them a fair, I do want to give things yeah, a shot. Yeah, cause they did think of it themselves. Yeah, and it's not really sure. for him even. It's really like, do I dislike it as much as I thought mm -hmm. I disliked it right in the beginning? Can't, you know. But yes, go with your gut. You know. Yeah. Bernard gave me earrings once when we were dating. 
but we were just leaving for our six month world adventure. Mm -hmm. And they were like, I opened them and I instantly knew I would never buy these for myself. Yeah. And they were like kind of dangly, like different colors. And I was like, Oh, thank you. This is so sweet. Like you've never bought me earrings before. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, and oh, I shows. don't like them. Like I don't yeah. like them. And I never told him, but then he kind of realized I wasn't ever wearing them. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm sure now I know he would have very much appreciated if I was just like, oh, do you have them still? I, no. Oh, no. I don't even know where they are. No. How funny. Yeah. So like, what were they in the purge of the six month giving? Well, no, we had already, like we were like leaving. So oh. they must have been brought around the world with me at some point. <laughs> the bottom of the suitcase. Yeah. So I think in my head, I was like, well, I can't really exchange them now. We're leaving to Spain. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now in talking about it, it came up. He's like, no, I don't care. Like, you're the one that has to wear it. You should like it. Right, exactly. And we all want to feel like we're in our own skin. So when you wear something that's not your style, it feels like like, ugh, like nails on a chalkboard. Like, I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, even if I like put on the wrong pants and like all day I'm like hating them, like, mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, and that ruins my whole day. Yeah. That's why I think I go back to that woman's response of, I really didn't like the ring my husband got me, but because I know he picked it for me, it made me like it more, if that makes sense. And it's like, it makes sense that you appreciate your husband. And I think that they need to be, they can be, they can be separated. You can still so love that your husband picked a ring, was thinking of you, was yeah. doing his best to find the one that he thinks you're going to love. And you can also say, but I don't want to pick a different one. Let's go pick one together. Well, it's interesting. She also said that um, it's just a ring. It does. It's not. I don't really care about it. That it's just a ring. And um, I, well, maybe she buys jeans at Costco then and doesn't care about jeans either. Like well, that's maybe, what I'm saying. You know? That's what I was gonna say. Like I am very particular. Um, not only about no shade to Costco jeans buyers. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, have I bought jeans at Costco? I'm like, uh oh, don't offend me. I do buy clothes at Costco. I literally can barely leave Costco without buying another sweatshirt. Or yeah, you do love Costco clothes. They're just so comfortable. But yeah, I mean, my point is like, I guess it, it can bug some people and literally not bug. Oh yeah, I like know. like I'm obsessed with cars, right? Like I would never drive. Are I you obsessed with cars. I really am. Oh, I, I, you don't know this about me? No. Oh my god, I'm very particular about cars. Like I had a minivan. For, for like six, six seconds? I don't even think, I think it was like four months. And I, oh and I God. literally, and it, it was like, you know, like it costs money to switch cars. You have to yeah. pay the fucking license, license fees. I literally was like, I, I was like, Brian, I, I, I refuse to drive this. I will not drive this. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> drive around. I cannot sit in it anymore. And I switched it out. For but a then car four that months made, prior, you were like, this is it. It was like, I had just, you know why? I was doing, um, sta I was starting to do staging for um, real estate oh. and I was like you know if I get into this it's obviously better to have a lot of space I, I need put furniture and I had the babies they were young mm. so it was like and they did really like it like they could walk over they really liked the way it felt and mm -hmm. so that was like okay let's get a minivan this makes sense like I have two babies I'm gonna be hauling furniture around like this is the the smart I'm not gonna get a truck mm -hmm. you know and I couldn't it didn't matter I was like no fuck it I refuse yeah it like rubbed you the wrong way yeah but some people literally people don't care about cars at all they yeah. wouldn't even know what kind of car they they like, have whatever whereas I know like yeah. everything about my car you know what I mean it's like yeah, everything yeah, different teach their own but to, we, we were answering the person that asked the question. Yes. No, yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna... Wowie! Uh, okay. Are you loving anything this week? I actually am. Oh, good. So I um, was listening... Well, I listen to a lot of podcasts. And one of the two separate podcasts that I listened to were talking about this Netflix special. It's brand new. It's called get on your knees oh have you heard of it no i think you'll i think you'll really 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 like it and so i had heard about it twice um it's jacqueline novak she's the comedian author and i had i used to follow her on instagram i don't i just, she related to bj novak i don't know oh i don't know um but i had followed her in the past and so i just re-followed her today actually but um it's her special it's just her on stage and of all the people that talked about it on these podcasts, um, 
it was very mixed reviews. Overall, everyone really, really liked it. But like a lot of people kept saying that they weren't belly laughing, that they weren't oh. like a norm. It's more like an essay. It's more like a monologue that she does. And so I had, I had to know, and I wanted to, I always like to wait for Brian to watch things that I'm interested in. Cause I feel like he'll like it too, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm at home all day. I had time. Okay. I had to do it. And so I was watching it and I was laughing so fucking hard. Oh. I was laughing so much and I felt so like, oh my God, if I were a stand up comic, that's who I would be. I would talk exactly the same way. I think the same way. Like I just so related to her. And it's so funny. She talks about, obviously, sex and blowjobs. Yeah. And it's fucking hilarious. I know. I'm like, just the title alone, I know Bernard's going to love it. You have so. I, I, I we'll really, watch it tonight. Yeah, please Get watch it knees. and let me know. Because it was interesting to hear men's reactions. These are, like, you know, journalist, like, opinion critics. And then women's reactions. And even some of the women were like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. I didn't laugh very much. And I was like, what? What? Oh my gosh, I was laughing. To so much. each their own. I'm sure I'll think it's hilarious. I think you'll think it's really, really funny, but I, I want to know. That's what I'm loving this week. It's called Get On Your Knees on Netflix right now. It's brand new, just came out. I feel like I've loved nothing this week. Well, you know, this is a very new thing. I don't think I would have had anything until I watched this. That's crab crabby this week. Yeah, me too. And I, I think I have a whole. More, more days until I start my period. I do too. It's like it's a definitely week. another week. Yeah, I know. I know. It's such a bummer. Such I was like, bummer. this feels early to be feeling this emotional. I know. It's hard being women, guys. It really is. Ladies. I think it's hard being a, a human. It is be hard fair. being a human. To but be fair. I think women have it just a scotch harder. Okay? Well, you're right. And I would I would dare to say more than a scotch. More lots of scotches. Many scotch. All right. Well, you don't have to love everything. Thank you. And that's okay. You are allowed. I give you permission. Thank you. You're so welcome. See, we're sitting in these new chairs, and for those who are not watching the YouTube video, they are like therapy chairs. So I feel like, you know, we're just really leaning into this therapy session of ours. And this is our first day of doing it, so it really, we're going to get used to it. Like, I feel I like it's like even it. going to get better. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had a lovely time and learned a little about bullying from two moms mm -hmm. who have had a little bit of experience with that. Well, um, I mean, which my kid's the bully, so yeah, I guess a little on the flip side. Yeah, we've had both sides. Mm -hmm. We have both sides of the story here for you. Um, More to come. <laughs> always. Thank you so much. If you loved this episode, please share it with a friend or two. We love to meet new people. We love to grow this community and we love having you. Yes. And please rate, review, and follow the show wherever you get your podcasts.